Hi, welcome to my channel, Mostly Knitting. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you're new here, this is a weekly podcast where I talk mostly about the knitting that I've been doing during the week, and I also put out regular tutorials. Now, it's actually been two weeks since I last recorded. It's Wednesday the 17th of April, and I'm recording from Sydney, Australia. I should be back to a weekly schedule. I, um, I'm on school holidays at the moment. I do have quite a bit of work to do, but um, being school holidays, I should be um, I should be able to get uh, back on track with a lot of my schoolwork and hopefully get back to recording weekly. So I will start with my finished objects. Um, I actually don't have that many. Um, I, well, I have two, but then and they're not very big. One of them I don't have with me. That's the Skimmer Socks by Sheila Toy Stromberg. And I'll put a picture of the, um, the finished socks up there. And the yarn that I used was this KFS Opal Sock Yarn. Um, so the reason I don't have it, it was for uh, a birthday gift for a friend. And yeah, she liked them. Um, I also got her some stuff from T2 as well. And this is how much I have left of a 50 gram ball. I actually didn't weigh it, so I'll just put down below. Um, I think the two, the pair of socks weighed about 33, 34 grams. So um, yeah, I've got about a third of the ball left. I might be able to, I don't know, I don't know what I'll do with that, something. Um, put it in with the other pile of other um, leftover sock yarn. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I hope they fit her, they fit me, and I think our feet are around the same size. So. Hopefully she likes them. And um, the other thing that I um, that I finished was this hat. So I haven't given it away yet. It is a gift, and it is a um, a really small cropped kind of beanie for my daughter Mia's her grandfather Gabby. And he really likes his beanies. I'm going to put it on. It's going to look a little bit funny, but it only weighs about a bit under 50 grams. This is Madeline Tosh. Um, DK, not DK twist, just DK, in the colorway cloak. And what I did was I cast on 96 stitches on a provisional cast on. I knit um, with a 3.75 mil, about nine rows, and then switched to a four mil and knit another nine rows. So like the smaller needle is on the inside, then knit about the same amount on a longer needle. And then I did a three needle bind off, like put the provisional stitches on another needle and did a three needle, it's not a three needle bind off, just a, knitting knitting one from the live stitch and one from the cast on so you're not actually binding off sorry just to like i guess it's like a three needle bind off but you're not actually binding off yes it's not actually technically a three needle bind off i'm just knitting the live stitches with the with the cast on stitches to connect that yes sorry misspeaking there and then i just did i don't know i can't remember i put all my notes on um ravelry and then just did standard because 96 stitches I did standard decreases, um, like, you know, decrease eight stitches, knit a row even, and you do it sort of in those um, regular intervals to create that, um, you know, spiral on the top. So you can see I haven't actually woven in the ends. Um, I haven't knit Gabby a hat in a while, and it just feels so weird. I'm gonna put it on, because it looks kind of funny. Um, but I th I'm positive this is how he likes to wear his hats and if I ever make them any longer he always rolls the brim up anyway so this is what it um this is what it looks like so you can see how short it is and it comes up above the ears but anyway I'm seeing him on Tuesday so I'll take it with me and the reason I haven't woven in that end is that if he if he actually wants a little bit longer while I'm there I'll just undo knit a few more rows even and then like the decreases only take about an hour so in the time that I'm there I'd be able to you know, and I've got about this much yarn left. So, yep, so, and um, like that is a really quick knit. It's just basic um, knitting in the round. Yep, so that's my only two finished objects for the two weeks. So I'm going to um, go to my segment, which is Friend from the Vault. And I actually have two friends from the Vault that I'm wearing today. I'll start with a skirt, because I think the skirt's a bit cuter. So it's called Jaunty, and it's by Rurico. And I, um, I'll just stand up and show you, and then I'll talk about it. So it's, um, well, I won't talk this far back, so I'll just show you. And it's got like a little swirl. Um, and let me see. It's got these, the increases. Maybe later I'll, um, I'm, I will get changed later in the podcast. And when I do that, I'll take it off and show you. Um, but I'll talk about it now. Yeah, it's really swirly. I gotta do that again. And I usually wear it with um, just like with tights and, and boots and this black top. Right, so I'll talk about the skirt and um, when I get changed, I'll, I'll actually show you some of the features. So it's, um, I used Volmise 
100% and this color here it's like a way different one but it's sort of like it's a really nice tealy um, tealy blue and then you've got this gray and then this purple I'll put the um, I can't remember what the names are I'll put the names down below and yeah I um, I knit this in over the Christmas holidays in like Christmas 2016 January 2017 and I had a look, I was so surprised. There's a lot of knitting in this because it's a four ply. Um, Volmai's 100% is, each skein is 150 grams and oh, 500 and something meters. And I knit this in two and a half weeks. So I was obviously on a roll. Like clearly it's mostly stocking it in the round. Actually, I can show you some of the, the, the increases are like in this kind of spiral. Yeah, there you go, I can show you that. Um, but I will take it off and show you as well. And then it's got this folded um, waistband where you actually, like I've inserted elastic in here. So I did a provisional cast on and then knit and then did a, a purl turning row and then knit down. And then similar to the hat where you knit the live stitch with the, um, like unpick the provisional cast on, knit the live stitches with the cast on. And as I did that, because of course that's closing it up, and as I did that, I had the elastic feeding it, um, feeding it through, so that when I got to the last few stitches, I had to actually um, pull it out, sew it on the sewing machine to close the circle in the elastic, and then finish, um, uh, finish the three needle knit together to, um, to finish the waistband. So yeah, so that's how that works. And, um, Yes, I'm like, I just, I actually really love this skirt. I love wearing it and it's super comfortable. It doesn't have any pockets. That's probably the only downside about it. But I used a full skein of this blue. That was a whole 150 gram skein. Um, I'm not exactly sure how much I used of the um, gray. And I think I used almost a whole skein of the, the purple. So it was quite a lot of knitting, but because it's like mostly just in the round with just increases coming out, it was super easy and it was, you know, like for me, that's just my happy place of, of knitting and I really wanted to wear it. And yeah, I'll show you a couple of other pictures of um, other people who've made it in their different colors. I just think it's really pretty. So is there anything else I wanted to say about it? Um, yeah, I just wear it with this. I think that's all I wanted to say about it, but I do wear it with this black tee. I'll talk about this one now and then why I'm, I think I might need to knit something else to wear with this because I think this one's a little bit long so if I if I stand up you can see here like it this covers so much like this is there's the waistband so you can see how much how, like how long this is and if I actually put it tucked in it then kind of looks a bit lumpy and it sort of adds all this bulk around my hips so I think I'd probably want another one where I could tuck it in, but it only sort of comes to maybe about here instead of all the way down here. So um, I would like to knit um, another top like this and probably I also would like to knit it where it's not so high, um, such a high neckline. So this top was actually a bit of a, um, a mishmash of a pattern and my own fiddling around. So it was the lightweight pullover by Hannah Fettig and um, that one actually has like a like a cow neck, which I didn't like a turtle neck kind of, but sort of a loose turtle neck. Uh, and I've made that a couple of times before. Actually, I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that in next week's friend from the vault. My other ones that were actually knit to pattern, and I didn't want that, but I did kind of want a high neckline. Anyway, it's kind of ended up sort of in the middle. So I did a provisional cast on, knit the whole body down, and then picked up stitches and then knit up. But it's sort of this is actually. Uh, a, quite a nice soft yarn it's cascade heritage silk um, so it doesn't bother me at all around my neck it's definitely next to skin soft but it does peel a bit so uh, I am it was even peeling as I was knitting it so that was sort of worrying me I was like gosh I haven't even finished making this and it's peeling um, and it wasn't like I was carrying it around everywhere um, so I made this in 2014 so this is about 10 years old I guess that's not too bad but it is it does have a few um, you know, and I do depill it a little bit occasionally and I guess it's black so it's not like white where you just can see all the fuzzies. Um, yes, yeah, so that's what I did with this one. It took pretty much two skeins of the Cascade Heritage Silk. So that's like 800 meters, but I made it so long. So I wouldn't, um, and so if I was to make something like this again to go with this skirt, I would make it maybe shorter sleeves, a bit more of a crew neck. Um, so I need to figure out either find a pattern 
that I could just buy and use or modify something else. But I, at this stage, I probably just want to find a pattern that has a nice basic crew neck um, that would work for this, for like a four ply yarn. I actually have some Volmise lace garn in um, Schwartz in like, it's a black color in stash. So that could definitely work. Um, that would be pretty fine gauge knitting, but obviously it's just stopping it in the round. So it's pretty easy. Yeah, so these are my two friends from the vault. This skirt that I absolutely, I gotta, I'm gonna twirl again because it's so cute. Very twirly. Um, not that I do that when I wear it because that's a bit silly. I'm not 10 years old. Um, but it's, you know, it's just got all this nice movement. And so yes, it is a lot of knitting, but it's very easy knitting. And it was, it was nice actually to have the um, waistband completely done as I was knitting so that I could try it on and, you know, um, make sure I was happy with the length and block it as I went. Because the Volmise is a superwash, so it doesn't grow a lot, but just a little bit. Um, and I wanted to make sure I got it at the right length and it's right around knee length. Right, so even though my regular finished objects were not that exciting, um, hopefully that was a little bit more interesting at least. And I totally recommend the pattern. It was a really, really good pattern. Um, I think I've, I think Ruriko did relax and I've made like five of those. So I obviously like her patterns and her style. Right, so anyway, that's my friends from the vault. Now I will get into my works in progress. So I only have one new work in progress, which is another pair of Skinner socks. Um, I don't actually know what this yarn is. This is some yarn that um, my aunt had as a leftover. So I'd probably have to ask her, um, but she's overseas with my mum at the moment, so I won't bother them. And these are actually, I'm gonna make these for my mum because I only managed to make her one pair before she went away. She told me actually, she said she went to the podiatrist and so she, and she was wearing my socks to the podiatrist and she took them off and the podiatrist said they were the prettiest socks he'd ever seen. Um, and obviously he hasn't seen a lot of hand knitted socks then because they're pretty basic socks, but they are really nice color anyway. And I think she was so chuffed and I was, it was, I was chuffed. So I'm making her another pair and um, where am I up to? So this is my walking and knitting. I've only just finished the toe and the other bit and now I'm actually um, knitting on the bottom of the foot. So that's the, um, and I'm knitting that on a 2.25 millimeter needle and I did actually, I was clever, I wound this into two balls. So as long as I can find the other ball, that's the only danger. When I wind it into two balls, where did I put the other one? So hopefully I'll find it, but this is half of the yarn. And um, yep, anyway, I've got plenty of this one. There was like 40 grams. So that's my only new uh, work in progress. But I have made heaps of progress on my other um, works in progress. So I'm going to get changed and I'll show you them. Right, so I'll just show you um, the skirt up closer and you can see how it's got um, the increases just in equal sort of segments. And that's the folded waistband. And I used a black elastic so that it didn't, because I thought white would definitely show through and the black is, um, the black works fine. And I think it was like, 32 millimeters was the elastic width. I don't know what that is in inches, but um, actually two and a half centimeters is an inch. So it'd be one and a quarter inches. Yeah, so it's actually quite a lot of, it's pretty rapid deep, uh, increases as you go down. Um, and it's got, the edging is just like a, just a garter edging. Um, yep, so that's, I can see myself as I like, I can see myself making another one. Um, I just have to have a look at my Volmise and stash. Now I look a bit crazy at the moment because I've got this top on over a, over a, um, a, just a, you know, camisole. So this is camisole, this is my um, other works in progress. This is camisole number nine by my favorite things knitwear. And I'm using knitting for olive cotton merino in the colorway bark. So I have made a tiny bit of progress on this. So what I did was I picked up the stitches and I knit, this is, um, I'm knitting this on a 2.75 mil needle and the pattern actually recommended a three millimeter needle. And then you do this, um, you actually pick up the stitches on, on the wrong side, which is the reverse to what you normally do. And then you knit that, so you pick them up on a two millimeter needle and you knit, I think 18 rows, and then you bind off on the larger needle. And then what I have to do is sew, sew this down um, onto 
the right side so that the bind off is like this um, feature that you see in the pattern. You know, it's definitely something that draws your eye to it and it looks really classy. There's a video for it that's linked to the pattern, but the video is completely in Danish, which is fine. You can kind of, but of course they're talking about you go in here and then you go out there. Well, you don't know what they're saying. Well, I don't know what they're saying. I don't speak Danish. Um, but what I was, um, what I noticed was that the yarn that was being used was much lighter and it was like, it wasn't a sewing thread. It was like a lace weight as opposed to whatever, you know, a fingering weight. So either, I'm not sure, I'll have to, um, if anyone has made this and they want to mention what yarn they used to sew it down, Karen, I know you've made it. Did you use the same yarn? Um, this is a pretty fine yarn. What I sometimes do, which is what I do when I sew on buttons, is I split the plies. So if you take the yarn and you, and you sort of untwist it, you can break it up into its, oh, see as I do it now, I won't be able to do it. I don't know if you can, oh, where am I going? This, this is made up of a bunch of plies. There we go. I'm glad I took my rubbish nail polish off. There you go, three plies. So what I could do, and I'm not sure, now this this becomes very fragile. Like, like if you're sewing on buttons and you do that, you actually have to be quite careful that you don't break the yarn, because that's how um, yarn, one of the ways it gets its strength is through a number of plies twisted together. But I don't know whether one or two strands um, would be enough. So you can like just remove one strand and keep two strands to sew it down or whether one strand would be enough. Obviously I need to like I need to sew it down securely and I don't want it. Let me just see what it's like. Oh, actually that's, hmm. Yeah, I had, to, I had to pull reasonably hard on that. Um, so yeah, so you have to sew, and that you can see what they're doing in the video, but uh, honestly, I'm not looking forward to that. That's gonna be quite a process, you know, and I'll need to be sitting there with my glasses and good lighting and, you know, I reckon that's gonna take I don't know, definitely over an hour. So anyway, that's the next bit to do on this. The other thing, um, I just blocked it last night as well. The other thing I'm thinking about is um, is ripping back because I think it's a little bit, I cast on, I mean, I cast on what the pattern said, but I think my gauge is a bit big. So um, a little bit bigger than the pattern. So I think what I might do is take off maybe four stitches. It's not that much, you know, it's not that much knitting maybe take off four stitches on either side. Um, I, I sat it down on my pie camisole, which I made out of the same yarn. Here it is, sorry. And um, and it actually, they're pretty similar, but after blocking, I think it's maybe about an inch too big. So if I took off four stitches on either side, yeah, because you can see, like it's meant to have negative ease and it definitely, it doesn't look like it, it does have a little bit of negative ease, but I think, yeah, I think I need four less stitches on either side, so eight less stitches total. And, you know, you might think, oh, is that really worth bothering with? I think it will be. Um, yeah, I think it will be. So I'm going to have to rip that back up here. Anyway, that's, that's a to-do when I'm, when I can, when I've got it in me. I don't have it in me at the moment. Um, oh, the ripping back isn't that hard. And then, yeah, I mean, ripping back doesn't take that long. It'll take me like half an hour. Yes. Anyway, that's that's not that big a deal. And then I get to just keep knitting, stocking it down. But I think, like, obviously, I do want to... I've got plenty of yarn. So I've got this and one more ball, um, which is a total of three balls because this is one ball of yarn and then just a little bit used for the neckline. This is pretty open. Um, so there'll be quite a bit to... Like, I've got to do the same thing that I'm doing here. I have to do around the sleeves. So I think definitely before I do the sleeves, well, obviously I have to rip back before I do the sleeves because I have to cast on less stitches. But then I also, um, I'd like to do the technique here on the neckline before I attempt it on the side. But of course I have to rip back and, and cast on less stitches under the arms before I do that anyway. Right, so that's my one of my works in progress. That's two, the skimmer socks and this one. I'm almost thinking, I don't know, I'm debating. If I get all my schoolwork done before the end of the holidays, I'll come back to this. If not, I think I'm gonna actually put this aside until the next school holidays and just almost, not almost, but actually maybe even hibernate it. Um, like, yeah, I'm just, cause I feel like there's, I, I need headspace. Um, 
I don't know. Certainly like the whole thought of like sewing this down, maybe I'm making that into a bigger deal than it is. That's my doggy. Um, yeah, anyway, watch this space. I'm, I'm not hibernating it yet, but I'm prepared to, because I don't want to have it sitting around and then I, you know, I've got nothing else to work on except this and I'm not in a state to be able to. Anyway, it's very unlikely that's the only thing I'd have to work on, but, um, but you know, maybe I've only got socks or something and I always want to have a sweater. So speaking of sweaters, I have, the storm oh hang on it's attached to the ball um i have the storm sweater by petite knit and i am knitting this out of the recommended yarn which is and the recommended color even um pier gint in the colorway ash melange now where i was last episode two weeks ago i had not joined in the round so i have joined in the round now this is huge. So I'm knitting the extra, extra small, which is meant to be a 42 and a half inch bust circumference. My bust, which is for a 32 inch bust. So it's meant to have about 10 and a half inches of positive ease. And it is, I've got gauge. Gauge is 20 stitches over four inches. And it is coming out around 42 inches. So I'm obviously on gauge. So I'll try it on. So you can see this is, it's gonna be heavy, right? Because this yarn, 50 grams is, 90 meters 91 meters so as a result like that's um for my size i had to buy 13 balls of yarn so that's 650 grams that's quite um you know i can even feel like I feel, it doesn't feel heavy like on my body at the moment but i'm i'm not even halfway through the yarn so i'll show you how it's going it's so fun it is actually really fun to make um like it's clearly oversized and I will, um, I think what I'm gonna do, I wanted, I was going to pick up the stitches for this, uh, the neckline, um, cause I like to do that in terms of as I knit down, but I thought I'll show you it beforehand and then I'll finish this ball. And when I finish this ball, cause I, I don't like to have too many balls rolling around. So I'll finish this ball when, when, when I've done with that one, I'll pick up and do the neckline. And then I thought, well, I'll show you, right? You'll see what it looks like before the neckline's done. And it's meant to have like a, I think a double fold neckline. So I'm, I'm actually excited to do that. So I am clanking just a little bit because I've got it on two, two needles. I'm using a four millimeter needle, which is recommended for the pattern. And you can see that it's got all this like really interesting sort of different textured stitches. It's really easy knitting and it is quite um, repetitive. So like for here, you might do say knit five, purl three, knit five, purl three, knit five, purl three, all the way around. And then you offset. So you know, it's sort of still knit five, pearl three, but like everything is moved back one or forward one, depending on which, you know, way it's going. So, um, but the thing about that is I can't read and knit this. So I've been reading a bit lately and because I'm trying, I'm sort of counting or at least looking, I can't um, read and knit, but I can watch podcasts and knit. I haven't been watching a lot of podcasts lately. I've been reading a bit more. So this one has had a bit of, you know, a bit of love, like in two weeks. Um, and it has been fun. Obviously, when I get to these, the garter sections, which is like, because it's knit in the round, it's actually knit a row, pearl a row, knit a row, pearl a row, then I'm fine. But there's only a couple of those in the whole thing. But I am enjoying it and I'm like, I'm quite looking forward to having it. It's getting cooler here in Sydney. It's not cold yet, but it's getting cooler. And I realize I just don't have a lot of oversized sweaters to reach. And, and I'm really wanting to wear more oversized sweaters. So, and this is definitely oversized, so. And I'm like, I'm looking forward to um, picking up those stitches and knitting those sleeves gonna be huge. Um, yes, anyway, so that one's coming along. Um, do I have any, oh yes, I do. I have a huge other work in progress. That is my half and half wrap. So this has, because this has been, um, this one I still have to pay a little bit of attention to. And if I wanna read, um, this is what I've been working on when I've been reading. So I am knitting, this is a half and half wrap by Pearl Soho, which is a free pattern. I'm knitting it using the recommended yarn, which is uh, Pearl Soho Linen Quill. And this is um, Baby Bird Blue. You can see I have them woven in my ends. Baby Bird Blue and Red Poppy. And I have actually done quite a lot of the Red Poppy. So, um, I have about 20 grams left and two weeks ago I had 74 grams so I've knit 54 grams which is just over half a skein um, which is like 200 meters that's a fair bit actually um, it's starting to get so this is where I'm I've marked this here this is the hundred stitch mark 
So I chose the large size, which is 260 stitches. And so I guess I'm almost up to, because you're increasing your every um, ridge, you go one stitch further over and I'm up to here and there's 160. So yeah, I guess I'm up to, up to about 155 grams a, um, a row. And each there and back takes just over a gram. So I've got two more skeins of this. I definitely won't use two whole skeins. I'll probably only just barely break into the third skein. Um, I'm starting to get a little bit bored. <laughs> um, but it's fine, like when I'm reading, I just kind of don't even think about it. Like I just, this is just in my hands and and I've got, um, it's easier if I read on a Kindle. I find it hard to read on a physical book. I sort of have to like put my phone on it so that the pages don't flip over. It's a little bit cumbersome. Um, yeah, so I definitely prefer reading on a Kindle, but my books at the moment are mostly paperback. So anyway, that's my half and half wrap and that's it for my um, works in progress. So what am I up to? That's four, which isn't too bad actually. Uh, let me see. I'm up to acquisitions. I have not made any acquisitions in the last two weeks. I didn't buy any yarn and I didn't buy any patterns. What has caught my eye? Um, there was this scarf that I saw on Instagram. I'm going to pause and find the pattern. So this scarf that I saw on Instagram is by um, a dot door dot a bull knits. I think her name is Dorothy Officier. And it just looked really pretty. It reminded me of the Sophie scarf. So I'll put a picture of it up there. It comes in three sizes and it's got some cables and some textured stitches. And it just looked really sweet. Uh, I don't know if I'll knit it or not um, because it's sort of, for what it is, there's probably a bit much going on for my brain um, to want to do it. It's called the, did I already say, the ginger scarf. And the pattern's not released yet. It's due to be released on the 30th of April. But it did catch my eye, so I thought I'd just mention that. They haven't, because I haven't been watching a lot of podcasts or even looking at Instagram very much, there's not a lot that's caught my eye. Um, but yes, hopefully that this segment will increase um, as the weeks go on and I get all my work done. Right, so I'm up to my plans. So um, one thing I am thinking about doing is, because it is coming to winter here, after um, Mia's grandpa Gabby has tried this hat on, um, I've got some more yarn. Um, this is Madeline Tosh MCN Worsted in the colorway composition, composition Book Grey. So I've got enough for another hat for him. So once I'm sure that this is right, actually I might even just um, cast that because I know the stitch count is right. Um, I might sort of get started on that and at least get the body done and just get up to the decreases. And once I'm sure that this one's right, um, I'll do this one the same. So that's a, an upcoming plan and that sort of can be my walking knitting. And the other thing that I'm thinking about doing, because I am thinking about um, hibernating the cami number nine, um, I promised myself that I wouldn't start the poppy tea until after I'd finished cami number nine. But if I hibernate it and I put it aside, then maybe I will. And you know, maybe I won't, maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just start it anyway because um, I want to try this yarn and I would like this in my wardrobe for winter because it's getting cold here. So this is Sanders Garn um, Sunday and Tin Silk Mohair in 4008 and I would use that for the poppy tea. And the other thing that I am thinking about, like I was mentioning that with that jaunty skirt, that I wanted a black top that had like a slightly lower neckline, shorter sleeves and not as long. Um, I might hunt down my um, Volmise the black volumize that I have and see if I've got enough. I think I do and maybe I'll start that. But I need to find a pattern that works. Um, it's weird, isn't it? Like it's such a basic thing. I reckon that would probably be a petite knit thing. Just like a basic crew neck, four ply. Mm, it's probably a three ply actually. Um, but you know, I could figure it out with gauge. Basic crew neck, short, and sleeve length, I can figure that out. It's just the crew neck thing that I, you know, it's the neckline. That's often, and I'll just do raglan, right? Like that's, yeah, I mean, raglan fits me pretty well. Um, but that's definitely something that's on my mind because um, I'm just not 100% happy with that skirt. Sorry, doggy footsteps. I'm not 100% happy with that skirt with that top because it just comes a little bit too long. That, But I don't want to shorten it, even though that one was top down, I don't want to shorten that one and rip that back because I have other skirts that are lower waisted that I need to wear that with. So it does have a function in my wardrobe but I just might need to make one that's a bit shorter. Right, so that's it for my, oh, and no, the other thing that I'm still thinking about, when this gets done, um, I want to make Snow Wonder by Heidi Kiermaier in this um, 
do we run the Tour Juliet? And that's also lovely and squishy. Right, so I think that's it for um, the podcast today, except for my personal stuff. So if you're leaving me now, thank you so much for being here. And I'll just get on to um, what's been happening over the last couple of weeks. Right, so personal stuff. It was my daughter Alex's birthday um, on Monday. And so we went out for sushi. Um, we went to an all-you-can-eat sushi. And I could, now this is Australian dollars, but it was $40 a head, which is probably about, I don't know, maybe $27 a head US. And like, there's no way I'm gonna eat $40 worth of sushi. And I don't know that any of us really would. And the sort of the quality is not as good um, as our regular sushi restaurant. Like if the six of us went out to a regular sushi restaurant, there's no way we would have spent $240 there, even if we ordered everything that we wanted and were full at the end. So I don't know that we'd go there again, but it was it was good to try it. You know, it's always good to try different things. Um, and you know, like especially for a birthday celebration. And yeah, I think that's it. That was that was kind of we're just she's trying to buy a car, so we just put it, put money towards a car for her. But I bought her some nail polish so that she could open something on the day. Uh, other than that, I went. I taught a class at Skane Sisters. I taught a toe up sock class, and that was a full class. Actually, it had six people, and it went really well. It was really fun. Um, everyone was really into it, and I just really, you know, sometimes it just all like. Um, there was, I was a bit nervous at the beginning because one person didn't know how to do magic loop and she was going to do the whole um, class on double pointed needles, but she was extremely proficient at double pointed needles. Knew, like we, I was able to teach her Judy's magic cast on with double points and she was totally fine with that. So, and everyone picked up everything really quickly and yeah, it was really fun. So that was good. Um, I don't think I'm teaching there again until early May. Uh, other than that, I've just been doing work um, towards my experienced teacher. So in terms of what's coming up, I am on school holidays, so that's really nice. Um, I've, I've started yoga. Uh, I've only ever done yoga a few times before and I just did it locally for the first time. Um, I, like I've done it a little bit with yoga with Adrian on the telly and maybe um, once when I was away at a retreat somewhere and, oh, and once when I lived in New York. And I just kind of, kind of was a bit like, nah, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. This lady is really, really experienced and um, it's just up the road and it's on Wednesdays, which is my day off. So even though it's like school holidays now, it's actually regularly on a time when I can go. So I think I'm going to start doing that every week. Um, so I still, I started running again too. Um, so I hadn't, I realized when I put it on Strava, I hadn't run in eight months. Like I've been walking, but I haven't been running. So that was nice. I've run three times in the last week and I'm going to do park run on Saturday. So that was, that's nice because I love walking and especially walking and knitting and walking and chatting with friends, but running, I don't know, it's different, right? They're both good, but um, yeah, I get something different out of running. It's kind of a bit more adrenaline-y and I have music going and, oh, and sorry, I just remembered something else that I did. We went to um, live, the band live, um, went to see them in concert at the Horton Pavilion here in Sydney and that was awesome. It was so good. We were like one away from the front and just singing away and Ed's um, voice is still, he's got a very distinctive voice. It's still fantastic and what was even better because it was live and incubus and one night, the night we went to see it, Wednesday live was up first and then Incubus after and then on the Thursday night they switched because so I guess they were like equal billing um, but I, I don't not into Incubus at all and so but it, what it meant was that like um, we got there really early I was able to be right up the front for live and it was yeah it was fantastic and then when Incubus came on I went up the back um, so yeah that was that was awesome it uh, I guess They've been going for a really long time now, like nearly 30 years or something. So yeah, so that was fun. Um, other than that, in terms of what's coming up, just lots of walks booked in with friends. So even though I've got a lot of work to do, I'm making sure that, I, that I'm reading, that I'm walking, that I at least get a few hours of something nice for myself. Um, you know, just sort of sprinkled in so that I'm not like, I don't go back to work in two weeks time, absolutely still like not having had a break. Um, I mean, it won't be a proper break. I'm not going anywhere. I'm literally glued to my computer if I'm not walking or reading. Um, but I'm hoping that this whole thing will be done by the end of the holidays. So I've got about another 10 days of holidays left. Oh, and I'm going out to dinner tomorrow night with my friend Gloria to this restaurant called Ito. In, um, it's quite new. Um, 
it's a Japanese one, so I'm looking forward to that. So, yeah, so I do have nice things to look forward to. It's not all, you know, I'm not miserable. Like, I, oh, I have been a bit. But, um, yeah, it has gotten me a bit down. Sometimes I get overwhelmed. I think probably what it is is it's such a big project that I find it, even if you make progress, it doesn't feel like you've made progress because you just, like, you know, it's this big and you've taken this little bite. Um, and sometimes you do this bit and you think you finished it, but, oh, I can't finish that until I've done something over here and then, like my brain gets so scattered, it's like a it's like a spider web of stuff to do. So it's hard to feel like any one thing gets finished. But anyway, I've, I've actually made some good progress in the last few days, so I'm feeling more positive. And another good thing, um, like my two daughters, they are both working or at uni, or both. And so it's only my son who's still at school and he doesn't have a license yet. He will in about six months time. But I feel kind of when it's school holidays, I feel a bit responsible to sort of get him out so he's out in the city with his mates I don't know maybe watching a movie today so that's really good um but I've been like oh, I've got this work to do but I feel like I should you know it's not my job to entertain him but I just don't want him sitting gaming all day so I've been trying to encourage him to you know get out and do stuff and do stuff with his friends but the good thing is he's got youth camp next week so that will be all week Monday to Friday so whatever like that will be a week where I, I'm not responsible to like you know, even just meals or whatever for him, I can eat just like a frozen thing chucked in the microwave if, if I need to, just so I can get, um, just focus on my schoolwork and hopefully go back to school with it, with it pretty much done. So the only other thing, um, cause I, I know this personal stuff has just been, even though I haven't done that much, I've been blabbing, but just last little thing is I've been reading. Um, so I finished that Bright Shining, How Grace Changes Everything book by Julia Baird. Um, I don't have it anymore to show you, so I'll just put a picture of it up there because um, I actually gave it back to my friend Amy who lent it to me. And it got better. So I was a bit, um, it was just very sort of episodic, like a bit here, a bit there. And I wasn't enjoying it that much, but it did get a bit better. It was a very quick read. It was, um, it was enjoyable and it was thought provoking. Um, yeah, but yeah, it was okay. The other thing that I'm back to, the, so the two books that I'm reading now at the moment, uh, I've talked about this one before, Never Let Me Go. I was reading this with my son, but he didn't really get into it. And I know there's a, um, a movie on it. Yeah, he just, he didn't really get into it, but I borrowed this one from the school library. So I feel, kind of feel responsible to get it back to them because I've had it for a, quite a few months. So where am I up to? I'm up to chapter 10 now. And yeah, I'm really, I am enjoying it. And it's also a pretty easy read. Um, I already know this, like I know the, I'm up to the part anyway, where it's like the big reveal of what's really happening. Um, I kind of already knew that anyway, I think. Either I've seen the movie or I read about it. Maybe I have seen the movie, but years ago. Anyway, um, I am enjoying it. And I even if I've seen a movie, like the book is usually so much better. So that's my kind of, that's my fiction book. Um, and I'm just kind of reading, like giving myself a little bit of time each day to read. Because if I let myself just read as much as I wanted, I would do that and I would not do any of my schoolwork. So I'm just reading two chapters a day of that. And the other book that I'm reading is called The Body Keeps the Score. And it's by Bessel van der Kolk. And it's about trauma. So it's mind, brain, and body in the transformation of trauma. So I'm up to, I just read the chapter on yoga. Um, and I've done EMDR before. So I've already read that chapter, but I have done EMDR. And I'm just reading a bit more about it. And I just find it really interesting. So this is where I'm up to now. Um, and I am reading a chapter a day. And this yellow here, everything past that is all of the, um, just all of the references to all of the, um, you know, because any time you quote a study, you like, because it's not, this isn't a fiction book, right? This is a, like a, a book that has, that's evidence-based. So um, it's got all of the citations at the back. So everything from there onwards is citations. So I actually don't have that much to go. I should have that, um, that book finished by next week, actually, if I'm at reading a chapter a day. That is, that is kind of the way I do things. I sort of like my, I go for my run, I read my book, I do my work, you know, like, I don't know. Otherwise, I just find the day's gotten by and I've either just read all day and haven't done my work or worked all day and haven't gone for a walk. Um, yes, so very structured and organized. And, you know, knitting in there as well. So that's why I'm like, I'm, I can't knit on this while I read, but that's why, um, what do you call it? The half and a half wrap has gotten <laughs> so much work on it. Right, that's enough blather. Um, yeah, thanks for being here. I do hope to be back to a, um, sorry, I got fluff on my face, back to a weekly schedule now and 
hopefully a little bit more interesting stuff in the what's caught my eye um because I, I would like to start watching a few more podcasts and seeing what other people are um up to in the whole knitting community because I enjoy that. And next week, I hope to have the, um, the neckline done for this so that you can see the difference there. I probably won't have it finished because I still have, I think maybe six or seven balls to go, 50 gram balls. But um, yeah, hopefully I'll, I'll at least have the neckline done and I'm not sure about cami number nine. I think I'll probably cast on the poppy tee. <laughs> um, all right, that's enough. Uh, I will see you next week.